Dr. Mulder's office. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Lubabalo. Honorable members, as I indicated earlier on, today we are going to be receiving a briefing regarding BRRR from the Auditor General's office. We congratulate our neighbors, Lesotho, for having a very successful, peaceful election yesterday. South Africa, through the Department of International Relations and Cooperation, sent a delegation and participated through the African Renaissance Fund, which we are going to be dealing with partly today from a financial perspective. We participated in the monitoring of those elections, also as part of the, the SADC delegation. So we congratulate them for a peaceful election. We hope that uh, the new outcomes, based on something which I think South Africa should learn from, which is for another day, we hope that the new outcome for the Lesotho people will usher in stability in that country because the destabilization of Lesotho and any other neighboring state to South Africa and broadly in the African continent affects us as a country. Such an election, which was, according to the report of SADC, which was on TV this morning, the elections were, were free and fair. I'm now going to hand over to whoever is mandated by the Office of the Auditor General to do the briefing. Uh, Chairperson, my apologies, yes. sir, before AGJ. May I just make a small correction, Chair? Uh, there's a second agenda item by the, the risk and audit committees of TECO, Chair. Uh, those are two independent structures, Chair. We should be briefing the committee on the implementation of the audit action plan. That's fine. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Over sir. to AG. Good morning, Chairperson, honorable members, colleagues from DARCO, and my fellow colleagues from the Auditor General. Um, my name is Kumari Naika, and I'm the Deputy Business Unit Leader of the unit that oversees the audit about DARCO, as well as the African Renaissance uh, Fund. I'm joined in today's engagement with you uh, by Potehi Matladi. He's the senior manager responsible for the audit of the portfolio. Uh, Sabua Mushlopi, as well as Onika Mashlangu, who are the two audit managers assigned to the audits of that portfolio. Um, as part of the deliberations today, it's important to for us to reflect uh, in terms of our focus, in terms of uh, our audit process. And in terms of those reflections, it's important to go back and reflect in terms of our operating environment, how we've undergone significant shifts, not only as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, but also because of simultaneous developments in many aspects of life, both uh, from personal as well as a business perspective, both locally and globally. And we've also, through these processes and reflections, reflected in terms of the limited progress uh, we've seen in terms of improvement of audit outcomes, that's Nash at a national level, as well as the persistent weaknesses we've seen in terms of transparency, accountability, and performance within the public service, which has had a tremendous impact on the lived reality of the ordinary South African citizens. This has given rise to a new focus uh, for us as the Auditor General of South Africa, where we are looking to play a more influential role in developing a public service that is characterized by performance, 
accountability, transparency, and integrity. Now, our strategic aspiration is to have a more direct, more stronger, and consistent impact on improving the lives of the ordinary South African citizens by helping to improve the public sector culture through our insights, our influence, and our enforcement-related activities. This is what we've categorized as our Culture Shift 2030 strategy. Now, our success in this regard does not only rest on our ability to fulfill our mandate as per the Constitution, but also on the extent to which we are able to mobilize and bring the collective influence of the accountability ecosystem that Tabiso will unpack further as he gets into the slides to drive positive change and engender a culture of performance, accountability, transparency, and integrity in the public sector, resulting in meaningful improvements in the lived reality of the South Africans. We do this by leveraging our capabilities towards generating insights and applying influence on stakeholders, for which you are one of the stakeholders, in a manner that shifts the culture of the public sector towards one of performance, accountability, transparency, and integrity. Now, from the content included on the presentation, you would see there's a fair amount of detail in terms of how we unpack the performance-related information of the portfolio. You will see our reflections in terms of the achievements, the non-achievements, together with the impact of the non-achievements. And you'll also see our reflections in terms of how we've assessed whether the strategic objectives of DERCO is aligned to their mandate, as well as to the medium uh, term strategic framework priorities. Now, going into the slides, uh, to be, uh, Pateki will take you through those slides, but it's important to reflect from an overall perspective, we are quite pleased to, to see a improvement in terms of the opinion and outcomes relating to DERCO. While ARF has been uh, able to sustain clean outcomes for the last number of years, DERCO is finally out of a qualification outcome. They are now with an uh, unqualified opinion on the financial statements with findings related to compliance matters. So with those opening remarks, I am chairperson with your permission, I'm going to hand over to Potehi who will then lead the engagement on the presentation, and then we can engage uh, once we conclude that part of the presentation. Thank you, Chairperson. Pateki? Um, okay, thank you very much. Over you, to you, Pateki. Thank you, uh, Kumari. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, members, uh, colleagues from the department, as well as uh, my colleagues from the AG. So thank you for this opportunity to, to share with the committee uh, the audit outcomes of the international relations uh, portfolio, uh, Honorable Chairperson. So if you go into slide two, uh, we've got the mission and the vision of uh, the Office of the Auditor General. So our mission um, as the Auditor General uh, is, is that uh, we have a constitutional mandate and as the Supreme, Supreme Audit Institution of South Africa, we exist to strengthen our country's democracy by enabling oversight, accountability, and governance in the public sector through auditing, uh, thereby building public confidence. So how we enable uh, oversight is us as the Audit, Office of the Auditor General providing the relevant information to the committee so that they can ensure effective oversight. So our relevance as the Office of the Auditor General uh, solely lies in us being able to reflect uh, accurately so uh, on the way audit, that we, uh, audit work that we do. Uh, so the aim is to assist the committee uh, in its oversight role to, to assess the performance of the department and that enhances public sector uh, accountability. When you go to the next slide, slide number three, we have what you call accountability ecosystem. So what this is, uh, Honorable Chair, 
it's a, 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 a it's a network of uh, stakeholders uh, that we say if they all work together towards trying to achieve the same goal then we might find a system in government that is working effectively so if everyone in the uh, ecosystem uh, is engaged so when you look at the the, the 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 picture on your left you've got officials and it goes all the way uh, to the top the executive authority so in this is in in the portfolio so on the right we've got your support and oversight uh, which includes you know, the committee the, the parliamentary committees uh, and scopa so what we are saying here is that uh, given the mandate and given the nature of the audit that we perform usually we come at the end and if the the system in government is not operating uh, as it should uh, usually when we come, things would have failed uh, by then and we come at the end. So we're saying if things work and everyone work uh, uh, towards the same goal and all hands on deck, then we might find a system that is working uh, effectively. And at the center of it is us as the office. Uh, we're saying uh, this, how we can contribute to the culture shift is through insights, influence and enforcement. And what we say is that uh, then once everything works, then the beneficiary of all this uh, will become the, the citizens themselves. So, and then slide number four just gives you the different types of uh, audit outcomes. So I'll just explain these ones uh, in the next slide uh, where we deal with the overall audit outcomes. Uh, on slide five, Chair, the picture that you see there, we're just giving an overview of the overall audit outcomes over the years. So it is true, as my leader has already explained, that we have seen uh, some improvement in the portfolio. So DERCO eventually has managed to get out of the qualification. As we remember, uh, the, the department has been struggling with qualifications over the years. And in 2021-22, uh, they have finally managed to turn a corner and uh, managed to deal with the qualification. So how uh, in the past few years, they, they have been receiving qualified uh, with findings. So what we mean by qualified with findings is that uh, as the Auditor General, when we arrive uh, for audit, so the set of financial statements that we have been receiving over the years, uh, we picked uh, material misstatements. And uh, through uh, the audit process, then you find that management is not able to correct those material misstatements. So that's what we mean by qualified uh, uh, with findings. And of course, then the, the, the one area that they also struggle with is compliance with laws and regulations. But I'll unpack this as I go through the presentation. And I think uh, it's very fair that I also need to commend the fund, uh, African Renaissance Fund, uh, for maintaining a clean status of affairs over the years, uh, consistently so. And I think this is truly uh, by maintain, maintaining basic uh, discipline in terms of controls around financial statements, as well as preventing non-compliances uh, that we normally see uh, when we report reporting on the department. So, Chair... So now the department is sitting on what we call unqualified with findings. So what we mean by unqualified with findings is that, yes, uh, we still had financial statements that uh, were not credible when we received. What we mean by that is that um, we still identified material misstatements uh, when we're looking at the set of financial statements that we received. Uh, what is different now uh, when you compare to, to the previous years is that at uh, this time around, the department was able to correct um, some of these uh, material misstatements that we identified. So I'll just unpack this further as uh, we go um, on the presentation. So when you look at uh, what we have on slide six, so we're just uh, uh, capturing the overall message uh, that we want to share with the committee. So when you look at some of the areas that uh, the department is still struggling with, I think uh, year in, year out, we, we report to the committee uh, on the issue of uh, compliance, so uh, specifically around supply chain management. So some of the areas that uh, we're highlighting in our message is that the department, as I've already explained, they're still struggling to, to submit credible financial statements. So when we receive the set of financial statements, we are still picking up on material misstatements uh, that are only corrected after uh, we've identified them during the audit process. And one of the area that we, 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 we highlight every year is the supply chain, under supply chain management. 
So this is an instance where we identify um, non-compliances with uh, STM process, uh, uh, processes. So particularly uh, referring to instances where the department is supposed to obtain direct quotations when they are procuring goods and services. So we are identifying these instances mostly at the missions, at the missions uh, that DERCO is operating at. And also expenditure management. On this one, we are talking about, uh, we are identifying a lot of irregular expenditure. And uh, when you look at the, the, the history in the department, irregular expenditure has been increasing. So I'll just unpack this as well as I go through, when I go through the presentation as well. And the one issue um, that is also worrying is the issue of consequence management. So in the department, what we've picked up is that uh, over the years, uh, there has not been any consequence management that had been implemented in order to deal with this uh, non-compliances. But uh, I think the positive here is that when we met the, the DG, uh, I think in our first meeting, so what encouraged us as the audit office is that uh, his first thing on the, uh, on the table, his first task was to deal with the issue of consequence management. So that was encouraging, and this is something that we're keeping an eye on. Uh, we're keeping an eye on to see how the, 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 the consequence management uh, issue is addressed. So one of the things that uh, he's trying to do is to uh, deal with the backlog of consequence management uh, that deals with the investigations of all the irregular expenditure uh, in also including fruitless and wasteful expenditure. So in this plan, it also includes the assistance uh, from National Treasury to assist with the investigations uh, because only through investigations, one will be able to understand what are some of the true root causes that result in repeat uh, audit findings, uh, specifically on compliance. And only then, then the department will be in a position to put corrective measures and, and preventative controls to ensure that these non-compliances do not recur. And then when you look at the, 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 the performance um, of the department, so uh, we've noted a positive uh, performance because uh, in all the, the key projects, I mean, sorry, the key uh, programs of the department being uh, uh, international relations, international cooperation, public diplomacy and uh, protocol services, as well as international transfers, the department has managed to achieve 97% of its planned targets. So all these programs combined, they've got about 34 uh, targets. So unfortunately, uh, when you look at the, the, the fund itself, uh, we still struggled with, uh, they still struggled with submitting annual performance reports uh, that were free from material misstatements. On this one, we did identify material misstatements on the annual re uh, performance report that was submitted. And uh, the department was, the fund was able to correct the findings that we had raised. So subsequently, uh, the, 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 the annual performance report that uh, the final one uh, is free from material misstatements. So this was a uh, material misstatement on the accuracy of some of the reported achievements, which were subsequently corrected by management. So we commend uh, the fund for that. So we're saying uh, through uh, an action plan, which is root cause uh, focused, then they need to, 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 to deal with some of the, the root causes that we identified in dealing with, uh, in order to be able to address the, the issues that we picked up in the annual performance report, specifically the accuracy of the report, reported performances. So, Chair, uh, Honorable Chair, we do know that I think uh, in the past few years, it has not been easy uh, with COVID-19, but uh, on our side, we just want to commend uh, the department because uh, even though it was difficult with some of the uh, countries uh, which were closed abroad, but they still managed to engage in some economic diplomacy activities in order to try and uh, raise the flag of South Africa and see if then those potential investors can still uh, uh, come to the country and that can actually uh, in, uh, uh, add to the economic growth of, of, of the country. So there were multiple hosting of business seminars, networking sessions and engagements with pot potential high level investors uh, in an effort to try and lure investors into, into South Africa. And we also do take note that uh, over and above what the missions are doing, they also support uh, other uh, government departments. Uh, uh, the one partner that they partner with uh, is uh, DTI and uh, some of the state-owned entities. Um, and also, they also assist uh, the private 
uh, sector, specifically South African companies that want to promote their, their products abroad, as this also uh, increased the South African exports abroad. So the department uh, did actually uh, achieve, uh, in terms of the achievement overall, managed to achieve uh, in terms of their target, and we do commend them, uh, them on that uh, project. And when you look at governance, um, uh, although uh, there was um, uh, the, the, the portfolio was stable, but the, the position of the DG uh, as well as the CFO was vacant uh, in the year, and and also we've seen now the the DG being appointed after year, and I think that will also contribute to the stability uh, in the portfolio. So in the current year, uh, the department has actually reported about 237 positions. And 196 of those are actually sitting in the supervisor, supervisory uh, level, and about 41 of those are sitting in the senior management uh, uh, position. Uh, so one of the challenges that we noted is that um, because of the, the ceiling that uh, National Treasury has set on national uh, on departments, is that the current positions that the department has are not actually being covered uh, by the, the budget that is allocated, uh, which has a ceiling on it from National Treasury. So this is something that uh, we continue to engage with the department and also encourage them to continue those engagements with National Treasury uh, to find solutions uh, around funding of the department. Um, yes, uh, I think through uh, discussions with the DG as well, I think uh, we informed that the, the feeling of the position of the CFO uh, is currently underway. And that is something that will definitely follow up in the next audit cycle, uh, as that will also contribute to the stability uh, in the portfolio. So when you look at the overall vacancy rate uh, in the department, honorable chair, it's sitting at around 16%. And uh, when you compare that to the national vacancy rate of 10%, so that is uh, significantly uh, high. Uh, so due to the number of vacancies in the supervision and senior management roles, uh, this has negatively impacted on the quality of information that we receive and also those compliance with uh, laws and regulations because you need those multiple levels of reviews uh, in order to avoid those material misstatements that we pick up uh, year on year. So, yes, uh, Chair, uh, the issue of the funding, yes, it's something that it, um, we, we, we keep on engaging with the, the department and uh, we will follow up in the next audit cycle if there are any solutions that um, have been found to, 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 to also assist the department to deal with the issue of the, the, the employee cost. Uh, also to take note, uh, Honorable Chair, is that uh, the, uh, the department has discontinued some missions abroad in, it of, in an effort to try and keep uh, spending and eventually uh, also try to deal with the issue of uh, cost of employees. So this is something that um, we keep an eye on. Uh, and also looking at the, the cost of employees in, in the current year, uh, the department has exceeded uh, the cost of employees uh, ceiling that was set by National Treasury. And this actually resulted in them uh, not complying with the Appropriation Act. Uh, and this, and the, the, the amount that the department exceeded the, 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 the ceiling uh, is classified as irregular expenditure. So uh, also, Chair, just to repeat, uh, I, we commend the fund uh, for, for producing credible uh, annual financial statements uh, year in, year out. Uh, and this is uh, commendable. Uh, as I've already mentioned, the department is still struggling with that. And uh, one of the root causes that we picked up uh, that uh, why the, the department is actually struggling to produce credible uh, financial statements, it has to do with inadequate reviews at different levels. Because when you look at some of the errors that we pick up, uh, come from instances where the financial statements that are submitted for audit are actually not tying up to the schedules that support uh, the set that is submitted. So, Honorable Chair, um, so Honorable Chair, uh, when you look at the now uh, uh, procurement and contract management, I've already highlighted the the the, the issues that we're still picking up, uh, specifically relating to to non-compliance, which result in irregular expenditure. So some of these issues are being picked up at missions. Um, and also, if you look at the down at, at, 
as I conclude the presentation, I'll also highlight some of the recommendations. So one of the recommendations we say, um, the DDGs uh, who are the leaders in different branches, they need to work together uh, with the CSMs at the missions and together as well as the, the head of uh, uh, missions uh, to work out what are some of those root causes that result in the missions uh, incurring non-compliances, which are recurring year in, year out. And only after that, then they will be able to put preventative controls that are directly dealing with those issues, uh, those different missions. So on slide nine, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, we're talking about expenditure management. So over the years, we have seen a regular expenditure um, in the department increasing. So in the current year, the department incurred uh, roughly 311 million. And when you compare that to the prior year, of 187 million, that's a huge increase. Of the 311 million chair, uh, most of it comes from old contracts that were declared as regular uh, in the past, but because they are continuing services, uh, any spending on those contracts in the future will have to be uh, disclosed as irregular expenditure. So in the current year, I've already mentioned the issue around uh, spending which resulted in the department exceeding the cost of employees. So uh, about 109 million, uh, about, sorry, uh, about, about 100 million uh, of the irregular expenditure in the current year comes from non-compliance with uh, the Appropriation Act. So this is the amount in which uh, the department exceeded the cost of employee budget uh, ceiling that was set by National Treasury. And this is actually declared as irregular expenditure. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, in the current year, there is another non-compliance that we uh, also elevated to the audit report. So this talks to revenue management. So just to unpack this one, so what this is about is that as the department is transferring uh, officials abroad, uh, those uh, officials need to be accommodated. So in most accommodations, then they have to engage in lease agreements abroad. And when you engage in some of these leases, then you need to pay a deposit, which at the end of the lease term needs to be refundable back to the department. So Chair, uh, through the audit process, we did identify that uh, it's, it is not always the case that the department is actually receiving back some of those deposits that is due to them. And as a result, uh, in the current year, uh, the department has actually written off uh, about 26.9 million um, of in rental deposits, which could not be corrected, could not be collected. And this is an accumulation of those deposits uh, building up over the years. So we are saying, Chair, um, because of the uh, lack of controls uh, in the department, uh, such as uh, uh, regular reconciliations of the deposits that are due to the, to the department, and also due to lack of consequence management on those employee tenants and the corporate service managers at the missions as uh, failure to, 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 to actually follow up on those deposits, then we have seen an instance where the department had to write off uh, 26 million. So this is uh, something that we are actually currently assessing it for material irregularities to see if there were any financial loss on the department and whether steps need to be taken uh, to try and recover some of these monies. So, Chair, that, this is something that uh, we are currently uh, keeping an eye on and we'll also follow up in the next audit cycle in terms of the progress uh, on our recommendation on this issue. Uh, consequence management, um, also, Chair, uh, I've touched on this a bit, but uh, whilst we acknowledge that uh, the Minister has actually taken uh, consequence management at the highest level within the department, which we have seen, uh, resulting in the dismissal of the former CFO as well as the former DG. Uh, what we are not seeing is those consequence management filtering down to the rest of the department. So we noted that only a few uh, instances of uh, irregular expenditure as well as fruitless and wasteful expenditure have actually uh, been investigated. So in the department, there's currently a backlog but uh, when we engage with the accounting officer, so the plan includes uh, assistance, uh, obtaining assistance from National Treasury to assist with the fast tracking of the investigations uh, in order to, to ensure that consequence management uh, is implemented within um, the, de the department. 
so what we are saying is that um, uh, especially the issue of consequence management without first investigating the issues, what leads to this uh, recurring non-compliance is what leads to the department incurring fruitless and wasteful expenditure. It is almost impractical for the department to actually um, implement consequence management without first understanding what are some of the root causes that led to this um, uh, non-compliances. So we're saying uh, the internal audit uh, must continue monitoring the action plan and also the audit committee should play an oversight role, uh, implementation of and monitoring of the effectiveness of the action plan. And some of the things, uh, the value add services that we also offer uh, the department is that uh, we tried also to review the action, the draft action plan and give inputs before it is finalized uh, for implementation. And uh, on material uh, regularities uh, here, so in the current year, uh, we have not, uh, I'm on slide 11, uh, or on, in the current year, we have not identified any uh, uh, material irregularity. So DERCO is one of the departments that was selected for implementation uh, in the current year. So in the current year, uh, some of the development is that the department has uh, applied for condonation at National Treasury on the payments that were made uh, for New York projects. And um, they've actually received a condonation uh, from National Treasury. Some of the things that uh, National Treasury look at before they approve the condonation is whether the department has actually implemented consequence management around the non-compliance. And as I've already mentioned uh, in the presentation, Honorable Chair, is that uh, we have seen the dis dismissal of the former DG as well as the former CFO. And also, um, through this, the discussions with the, 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 the OXLA, uh, Office of the Chief State Law, uh, actually, we, 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 we got to understand that uh, currently the department is, trying, is going through court cases to try and recover some of the money that they paid uh, on the project. Uh, and uh, equally so, uh, the supplier is also suing the department for loss of income uh, for discontinuing uh, the project. So currently, Honorable Chair, uh, I've mentioned that we identified a lot of non-compliances uh, stemming from irregular expenditure, fruitless and wasteful expenditure, and also I mentioned the issue of uh, revenue management. So we are currently assessing all non-compliances uh, for material irregularities. Uh, to determine if there were any material uh, financial losses. And should it be concluded that there is actually financial losses, uh, a notification will be issued to the accounting officer uh, in due course. Uh, and this will okay even after the audit report is, uh, is issued. So the material irregularity process does not stop uh, after we sign the audit report. It's a continuous process that uh, can overlap um, to other years. And on slide 12, Honorable Chair, uh, financial health, um, in the current year, the department has not incurred uh, an authorized expenditure uh, when you compare to the prior year of 150 million. So the department exceeding the, the cost of employee uh, ceiling that resulted in irregular expenditure as the main division was not exceeded uh, in this case. The one uh, uh, concerning uh, area, uh, honorable chair, is the information technology in the department. Um, so the department is currently still using uh, old infrastructure. Um, and this has its risks, uh, as some of the infrastructure that they are using are no longer supported by uh, the original equipment manufacturers. So we've seen instances where backups, when the, the department is trying to run backups and they are failing. Uh, because of the old infrastructure that they are using. Uh, the positive uh, that I want to highlight to the committee is that uh, we have seen that the department has uh, appointed a service provider, uh, but because of the COVID-19 restrictions, uh, the progress was actually very slow, but it's something that we'll keep an eye on going into the next audit cycle. Some of the issues that we identified also uh, in the IT space, uh, Honorable Chair, um, are quite worrying uh, concerning at this stage. So we've seen instances where patches uh, are deployed manually into the production environment without actually being tested. 
and some employees who are no longer in the employ of the department uh, still uh, not terminated in the systems. So we are saying the department need to actually play, um, pay uh, closer attention to this. But uh, what is encouraging is that I think through discussions with the minister and also the DG, it is some, uh, something that is closer to, to, to them and they are paying particular attention to this to ensure that they modernize the, um, the IT environment of the department. Because uh, the world in which we're living in now, uh, we're living in a world of cyber attacks, hackings, and uh, we don't want to see uh, a situation whereby uh, classified information of the department uh, is being accessed uh, by uh, uh, people out there. So, Honorable Chair, um, through the audit process, we did also look at the, the financial assistance that um, the ERF has given to, 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 to Cuba. So this stems from a contract that was signed in 2012, uh, and the original uh, value of the contract was about 350 million. Through the reconciliations uh, that uh, we've inspected uh, from the from the fund, is that uh, to date uh, roughly 210 million has been dispersed. So currently, uh, there is uh, 50 million that is subject to a court interdict, inter interdict uh, from Afri Forum. And today, there has not been any payment that was made on that. So, Honorable Chair, as part of the normal audit processes, we do inspect um, the approval processes as well as the, the disbursements and whether uh, the ERF Act uh, is complied with. So, how this uh, has to happen is that. Um, before any funding is approved, it needs to go through the internal processes of the fund, and eventually it needs to give uh, get the approval of the Minister of International Relations. And also, uh, it can only be final approval if there's a concurrence from the Minister of Finance. So we did inspect uh, some of this documentation and uh, everything was above board in terms of the processes that were followed uh, complying with the ARF Act. Um, Honorable Chair, uh, some of the root causes on slide 14 uh, that the department uh, needs to deal with, and also we highlighting some of the recommendations that uh, we're saying the department needs to implement in order to actually overturn and improve uh, the audit uh, outcomes. So on slide 14, we've got uh, key root causes. Uh, we're saying uh, some of the root causes are ineffective oversight over financial reporting and compliance inadequate reviews of the annual financial statements, lack of accountability to address previously reported deficiencies and instances of non-compliances, ineffective action plan on compliance monitoring and the quality of financial statements. So this is uh, because we're still seeing non-compliances that is recurring, uh, which was reported in the previous years, but year in year, uh, we still identify in those instances of non-compliances. Consequence management not implemented within the department as some of irregular expenditure and full wasteful expenditure date back from 2017, 18, 18, 19, and as well as 1920. So because of the plan uh, that is currently in place and the assistance the department is uh, receiving from National Treasury, so we are monitoring the progress on uh, implementation of uh, consequence management. And ineffective oversight over performance reporting on ERF, inadequate review of the annual performance report on ERF. This is purely based on the material misstatements that we have identified on the annual performance reports of the fund. So we're saying a proper action plan can actually deal with some of these uh, root causes. So our recommendations to the accounting officer, uh, Honorable Chair, is that uh, he needs to continue uh, with the investigations of the remaining irregular expenditure. Uh, cases and this uh, must be extended to fruitless and wasteful expenditure. So those recommendations will need to be uh, implemented. Uh, it will need to be implemented after the reports are received. We are saying the accounting officer needs to enhance oversight role and compliance with key legislation applicable to the department by taking corrective action for non-compliance, especially on repeat uh, matters. So this deals with the issues that we, we, we identify uh, which are recurring here in year out. We're saying to the accounting officer, honorable chair as well, to say, uh, take necessary actions against officials not fulfilling their roles and responsibilities. This will actually be possible once the investigations are done and the true root causes are actually identified uh, for the accounting officer to be able to uh, deal with. 
uh, enhanced reviews of the annual financial statement as, as well as annual performance report before submission uh, for purposes. So the issue around annual financial statements, this uh, talks to the credi credibility of the annual financial statements uh, that we need to receive from the department. And also on the annual performance report, this talks to the fund as we uh, uh, still identify material misstatements which are corrected after. So on the issue of uh, posting, we're saying to the account officers, they need to look at, re-look at the policy for posting uh, of officials abroad. And some of these CSMs, uh, corporate service managers, do not actually have a uh, finance background uh, training because the CSMs are actually charged to, to look at, uh, to deal with the finances uh, within a mission. So we're saying a uh, finance background can actually help in uh, making sure that some of these uh, instances of uh, non-compliance is also, and also uh, non-compliances uh, with the reporting are, are not identified at the missions. So we also, I mentioned this one when I was talking to the non-compliances that we identify at the missions. So we're saying the deputy director generals need to assist um, to ensure that the action plan that is eventually developed deals with the true causes. And this needs to be done by working together with the CSMs as well as head of missions by working out exactly what are some of the, 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 uh, these true uh, root causes that result in uh, the missions uh, incurring irrelevant expenditure. Because usually it has to do with requisitions that they are not obtaining and not obtaining the level approvals for deviations. Uh, we're also saying uh, ensure the action plan uh, is root cost driven. So this can only be done uh, once then the, 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 the that uh, action plan exercise where they identify root causes uh, is done, then it will give them the true root causes and their action plan will be uh, root cost driven. Uh, Honorable Chair, and the one recommendation we have for the minister, we say uh, the minister needs to uh, follow up with the accounting officer uh, to ensure that uh, the recommendations are actually uh, 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 um, closely monitored and implemented. And lastly, Honorable Chair, the recommendations we have for the portfolio committee is that uh, we say monitor and regular follow up with the executive authority and the accounting officer on the progress on audit action plan put in place by the department and its entity to improve audit outcomes. And also the progress on consequence management, the filling of the CFO vacancy, because this will actually ensure that there is stability within the finance uh, uh, unit. And also, lastly, Chair, uh, the implementation of the IT modernization project. So this is our mm -hmm. submission, Honorable Chair, and uh, at this stage, uh, we will take uh, questions and comments. So the rest of the presentation is just a detail that deals with everything that we have already covered. So Chair, we'll take questions and comments uh, now. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Dr. Matsadi. You sound like a future role player in international relations. It's, just, it's a compliment. Uh, honorable Thank members, there is the, the, the presentation. We can Recording now engage. Stopped. Recording in progress. So I will do once off taking of hands and then we leave it there. So if you don't raise your hand now, there will be no second round. Chair, uh, my apologies. Should we allow audit and risk to present so that we ask comprehensive questions? We, com we combine them. Yes. I'm just okay. I agree, Chair. Okay, I, I agree. Second. Yes. Audit and risk. Uh, Chairperson, Honorable Faber, I'm trying to get my hand up, but somehow I've got a problem. But please recognize that my hand is up. Yes. Proceed, Honorable Faber. Or you want to speak after the presentation? Okay, Honorable Faber, you will be the first speaker after the presentation. Thank, thank you, Chairperson. No problem, no problem. Can you speak to Yes, Chairperson. Okay. Can the presenters on uh, 
Muile Gate. Do the report. And thank you, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members. Um, greetings um, the, this morning. Um, I just want to greet also the um, members of the Audit Committee uh, of uh, DERCO and ARF. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Honorable Chair, um, uh, I would really like to thank for the opportunity that has been afforded to the Audit Committee to, to brief uh, this Honorable Committee on the implementation of the 2021-22 Audit Action Plan. Um, and um, I would like to, to tender um, on Honorable Chair um, an apology uh, from Ms. Gabisile Similani, who is one of the Audit Committee members who could not attend today. Um, but I am excited to, I'm pleased rather to, to announce that I'm joined by the members of the Audit Committee, Mr. Perim Kokeli Willer, Dr. British Dalla, and Dr. Claudel Van Elk, and myself as the chair of the Audit Committee. Then we can just move along. Um, so our main uh, um, you know, briefing or the purpose is just to brief uh, this committee um, on the implementation of the audit action plan uh, for 2021-22 for, for by the department as well as um, the, AR, the ARF. Um, the, this audit committee has it been also um, said by the Auditor General of South Africa, you know, in, in their recent um, pre presentation this morning. We'll also um, like to echo, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the sentiment as well and congratulate the department uh, on, um, on obtaining an unqualified audit opinion with findings, of course, from the AG for the financial year that we've just wrapped up. Uh, you know, this is a, 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 a positive uh, outcome, uh, you know, uh, after four years where the, the, the department has been obtaining a, a, a for, for the past four years successive qualified audit of, of opinion. So this milestone really um, uh, will not have been achieved had it not been for the support, dedication and commitment of the, the minister, the deputy minister, senior management of the, 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 the department and uh, the, the staff at large and this honorable portfolio co committee as well for, for, for its consistent um, oversight uh, you know, on the department as well as other various oversight structures within the department. So, so um, uh, this is a, a good um, uh, you know, um, uh, outcome. However, as we, as we celebrate that, but I think the department must not be complacent. So we do encourage the department to keep up with the good work um, and also make it a, a priority to work towards the achievement of the clean audit, because we believe that is not an insurmountable um, you know, our achievement is as long as the department, uh, you know, um, are put on hands on deck to address, uh, you know, the, the issues that have been, uh, uh, you know, cited by the AG and which we will to a certain extent emphasize, you know, all, all on them. We, we do believe that there's still work that still needs to be done by the department and its foreign missions in order to get to that status and most importantly, to effectively execute on its mandate. So uh, we also do um, commend um, the African Renaissance Fund for, for their continuous obtaining of a clean audit for the past five years. We can just move however along. This is just, uh, you know, for, for, for um, emphasis purposes that as the, as the committee, we, we are here to provide an independent advisory to the portfolio committee on the progress that has been made by the department and the uh, and the fund on the implementation of their 2021-22 audit action plans. So this committee, um, it is an independent independent committee. So really, we 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 are not in any position to perform any management function, uh, you know, or, or, or assume any management responsibilities. Now. Um, then matching along honorable chair, and I will try to be brief because some of uh, you know, the, the, the issues that we are, we are gonna raise as the audit committee, they've been partially addressed by the AG as well. Um, so um, um, in the implementation of the 2021-22 uh, um, plan or detection plan, I think it is important that I give an overall background 
on the development and the implementation of it, um, you know, by this department and how it started in the previous financial year, just after the, the finalization of the audit by the, 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 the AG, because this is also the requirement by the Treasury uh, guideline to say as a standard practice, after each auditing cycle, all departments and the public entities, they are expected to, to develop and implement an audit action plan that will be, uh, you know, that will be based on the uh, findings uh, raised by the internal audit as well as external auditors. In this case, would be the, 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 the AG. And I must emphasize that, uh, you know, the, the, the findings uh, that are raised by both of these assurance providers they are, they carry the same weight and they are important. I know that mostly, you know, the departments or the public entities, they will gravitate in, in addressing or, or, or give the AG or the findings that are raised by the, the AG priority over the internal, or over the findings that have been raised by the, the you know, the, the internal or, 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 or auditor. So we have emphasized, um, you know, to, to, to the department that their audit action plan must um, incorporate both the internal and external audit findings. Um, uh, we have, uh, you know, journeyed with the department as they developed their audit action plan. And I must say, we commended the, the, the department that in the previous financial year for their 21-22, uh, you know, audit, audit action plan, uh, you know, focus was taken into... Uh, you know, into developing, uh, you know, the, this plan where various uh, stakeholders or role players, such as the internal audit, the, the audit committee, the national treasury, by the way, and even the auditor general were consulted and gave their input on the um, um, audit action plan uh, uh, prior to, to its implementation or, or prior to its finalization. Um, then as the committee, uh, we, 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 we advise the department because on, on, on honorable chair, it is important that the audit action plans, they are, they, are, they are not just become a tick box exercise and such that they are not even worth the paper that they are, they are written on. So we emphasized with, uh, you know, to the, the, the department that they must make sure that uh, you know they um, uh, uh, identify the root causes to these findings. You know, because for for them to be able to address the, the findings, they must know what were the root causes that uh, you know uh, gave rise to the audit findings. And our focus as well, or our interest was also on the adequacy and the effectiveness of the audit action plan. So, 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 so by that, in a sense that the actions that management will come up with to address those, uh, you know, findings really must address the root causes, thereby eliminating the findings. We, we can just move uh, right along. So, um, the, in, in, in the department, they, 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 they had established what you call an audit steering committee which was initially, it was chaired by the acting CFO, but on the recommendation of the audit, audit, audit committee, it had to be, uh, you know, um, um, chaired by, by an official senior or, 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 or official, not the, the, the acting CFO, because really we were uh, um, mitigating the risk of, uh, you know, the acting CFO being the referee and the player, because most of the, issues or the findings, you know, um, uh, speaks to, to her area of jurisdiction. So, 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 so she could not really, uh, you know, re report to, to, to herself. So this structure has really uh, um, uh, uh, proven to, to, to be effective as well, because it, we have seen how the, 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 the audit action plan was developed and the, the audit, audit committee did play also a role, uh, you know, in, um, in terms of the reporting and monitoring respectively of the, the implementation of the audit action plan. So both the steering committee will report on the uh, you know, implementation of the, the audit action plan and the audit committee will uh, you know, monitor. So that is what we have been monitoring um, for the, um, you know, on a quarterly basis. So let me then just uh, try to fast forward to get into, you know, into the nitty gritties of the issues.
uh, you know, in the um, audit action plan. So, um, so really, for 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 us, we 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 did re- recommend that the reporting of the audit action plan not only sits with the audit steering committee and the audit committee; it must also be reported and become a, a one of the standard agenda items in all ministerial management meetings. So, um, 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 as, as, as I've said, we, 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 our focus really was more on the on management conducting an in-depth root cause analysis, uh, you know, on the um, action plan to, to, to make sure that repeat findings, you know, there are no recurrence of, uh, you know, the audit findings. So, uh, 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 we have commended and reviewed the, that old, old, old audit action plan from an adequacy perspective. So, and we have also um, um, asked the, the internal audit to, you know, to, to give an independent assurance on the effectiveness of the audit action plan. Then allow me, um, Honorable um, Chairperson, then to, to give you now the blow-by-blow blow, blow blow progress um, update on the implementation of this um, plan. Um, I'm, I'm going to spend some time on the table or this, yeah, the, the statistical summary of the progress made, uh, you know, by management um, on the audit action plan. I just want to quickly from your screen. Okay, then we are there. Uh, apologies, I'm just presenting from my um, own screen, so I might not um, I keep track with what is being flighted. Thank you, um, Secretariat. When you look, um, uh, you know, into um, um, the progress, really, the states there, there were 89 number of findings or actions that were expected, uh, you know, to be addressed uh, in the um, audit action plan. So actually, there, there were 89 findings raised, right? And you'll see that in the next column, um, uh, uh, we, 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 we also have an independent uh, as assessment after follow up by the internal audit, because as uh, you know, um, as the oversight and independent structure, uh, uh, we 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 don't just take uh, you know the the what management just say. I mean, at first value, so so we do deploy some independent assessment and assurance. On, on what it has been re- reported or why, why it is being re- reported by management. Now you'll see then, on, on, on honorable chair and members, that out of the 89, 10, were, 10 findings were adequately closed. So which then, uh, that um, amounts to about 11% of, uh, you know, the 100%. I must give context into this 11%, uh, which in the main, as, 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 as much as we would have loved, uh, would have liked it, uh, you know, the outstanding 89% out, out of the, 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 I mean, 100% was also closed. So 100% was closed. So the 11%, uh, 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 you know, uh, includes the, 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 the prior year qualification matters, which the department focused on, on which was a strategic move really for the, the department to address those uh, material prior year qualification methods, which had caused the department to, 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 to be a, a consistently being qualified in the previous years. And that 11%, a closure of, of that 11% has a, a, a positively yielded, a, you know, a, a turnaround in the audit outcome. So where the department has moved into an unqualified audit, um, you know, o- 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 opinion. So, so that um, 11%, it, it, it includes of that. However, there the, the still uh, the, there was a sixteen percent of the finding that were reported to have been completed, but there was no evidence that was uh, 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 you know given because for us to 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 you know to get to to get that to to that level of comfort and uh, assurance to say those findings have been addressed and closed, we also need there should be evidence that supports that. So that we don't find ourselves or the department find itself where these findings re- resurfaced if you know, they, they were not adequately addressed. So the list goes on. Uh, it, there were findings, um, about 28% of those that were uh, reported co- completed 
but the, the, the audit test that was done by internal audit as well revealed that there was insufficient evidence. So, so the, 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 the 16% and the 28% Will then, um, uh, you know, the, the management just need to, you know, to to collate and and, and give, a, you know, every, every evidence so so that it could be, um, you know, um, um, adequately closed. And then the the, the others, the, the forty percent, which uh, about thirty five of those five findings, they they they, they are partially Im implemented. So so in a loosely uh, or simple term, they are still in progress. They have not been thoroughly, uh, you know, uh, closed or adequately closed. And some of those findings, we, uh, you know, um, uh, include um, SCM issues. They are still contract management issues, um, non-compliance issues. Uh, you know, as, as uh, um, um, AG has also um, cited earlier, consequence management, ICT um, uh, um, findings as well. So, so, so those have, have they've not been adequately closed. Then the six percent, uh, you know, um, um, re relate to the financial statement findings in the prior year, which um, uh, uh, you know some of those there were just dis discrepancies that were noted in the previous set of the financial statement, and this also these findings talks to to the quality of the submission of the financial um, um, statements. So, so, so really, this is a, a, a the statistical, um, you know, um, um, picture of how the department have have have, have, have been closing their, or rather, in, in implementing their uh, the, the, the audit action plan. Um, um, uh, what we can deduce from from this is that, you know, the pace with which uh, you know the department, um, uh, uh, you know, attends. To, to the closure and to the to, to addressing the, the, the audit financial statement is rather slow. Okay, thank you. Then we, we can just move into just our high level of observations, which then speaks to you know to to the implementation of the audit, audit action plan. Where actually in this plan there are still a, a, a you know a significant chunk of the findings that have not been adequately closed. But we just want to highlight, uh, you know, um, some of our, um, uh, you know, discomfort, uh, you know, um, um, uh, um, issues uh, that we, you know, we are raising, which, you know, um, re relate to the, the, the audit action plan or rather the, the issues that are still in the audit action plan. And why we are highlighting these, uh, um, you know, issues because we 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 we, we, we firmly believe that these are six significant six significant that the, the the department must look into if they want to effective effectively uh, implement and achieve it. Uh, you know, its goal of uh, achieving a, a clean audit. Not only that, and also to effectively execute on its mandate. So um, as, as I've said, we commend the, the, the department for having had an audit action plan in place. As I had I, I alluded earlier, I mean, I, I, I did uh, take you through how the, you know, the, the, the audit action plan was developed. Um, 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 uh, we were only, we, we, we were commenting that, yes, the, 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 the thorough process was followed and they successfully addressed the prior year qualification uh, matter, which is you know your um, disallowance account. Um, account. However, the, the audit action plan, as we have seen in the previous slide, was not eff effectively Im implemented. So, and this is evident by several repeat audit findings that you know we receive them in a uh, year in year out like your irregular expenditure but I, I will get into the details there um, um based on also um uh, the, the the statistical summary um on the implementation of the audit action plan it was evident that a detailed root cause analysis was not performed uh, you know, thoroughly, uh, you know, on each finding, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, which then we have seen that it has resulted in some of the actions or recommendations not addressing the internal control deficiencies from the audit findings. Um, for example, you know, the SCM findings. Yes, the department might, uh, did Im implement some actions such, such as the re review of, of the, the, the delegations of authority that established the contract management unit, 
provided some workshops on SCM related issues. But there are still findings, uh, you know, that have been raised by the um, AG on contract management issues where uh, non-compliance with the uh, laws and reg regulations. So I think this is where then the root cause and analysis is important because you need to diagnose, you say, well, what is the root cause? Is it a culture? issue or, or what what could have been uh, you know so 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 the root cause analysis is important so 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 having said that we are not taking away the 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 the, the work or you know the the the, the action that the, the department has, has taken in in it in the implementation of 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 the audit action plan and you'll see that uh, you know um all of the findings or the the resolution of those they are in progress they, they, they is a, there isn't one where the department has not started but uh, what they've done really have not effectively yielded results because they are still uh, repeat findings um, um, I mean um, um, uh, we, we, we can just move from this this one uh, 6.3 uh, where really we, we, we have en encouraged the management to, to perform a detailed root cause analysis. So in the quarter two that will be uh, having the, the um, audit co committee, we will, uh, our main focus will be that as well, because the, the, the risk of management not uh, addressing these repeat findings, you'll find that they, at the, in the main, they get up, being they, they, they get to be elevated and, and it become material issues. And uh, it, it is not, uh, you know, the, in the best interest of the department not to address those because it might regress, you know, as far as the um, audit op or opinion is uh, concerned. Then can I can we just quickly move then to um, to the next slide uh, to to number seven really here um, 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 we will also be looking at the audit action plan for 2022 23 and, uh, and and that action plan we will make sure that it also includes the internal audit and, and external audit findings as well as that that root cause and analysis is done for each uh, you know finding. So then I'll be taking through then the committee on our high level consent on the issues that are still not addressed in the audit action plan and, and which we have uh, co recommended that the, the department addresses as a matter of agency. So one is on the quality of the financial statements. Um, you know, that is still um, a, a challenge that the, the, the financial statements that were submitted to the AG for audit they, they still contained material misstatements and errors. And, and that is one of the causes of not ob obtaining a, a clean audit. Yes, they, they, you know, they did, the, the department obtained an unqualified audited opinion after they have adjusted for, for those material misstatements and errors. So we, we have strongly recommended that the CFO prepares fully fleshed interim financial statement as if preparing for the final for, for the final year end so 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 that the department uh, or the management get into the practice of uh, you know preparing this uh, you know um, set of financial statements not only just towards the end of the financial year where there is pressure you know and and they have to submit uh, you know, we, we you know within the legislative um, legislative de deadline, and we have uh, uh, even last year we, we had strongly and sharply uh, 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 asked the, the the AG, which really they 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 they, they did uh, you know come to, to the party to perform an interim audit, and the AG will will also even once again this year uh, perform an interim audit because interim audit it is important a uh, 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 chair because it serves as an early warning tool. Um, and this will also uh, you know, um, uh, um, assist the department in correcting some of the, you know, the, the issues which would have been uh, picked up you know, at, the, at the final uh, stage of the, 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 the audit. So if it's get picked up during the interim, then management will have time to, to, to correct and uh, address those issues. So um, um, this um, the, 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 the year has just that has just been um, you know uh, finalized. I mean the, the, the AG has also alluded, alluded to that there were material misstatement and errors, uh, mostly around list co commitments, prepayments, 
re uh, revenue main management around the rent deposit, where there was about 26 million, uh, you know, right off, uh, you know, from the um, rent de de deposit that the department should have recovered, uh, uh, you know, from the rentals or the rental deposit from the foreign missions. Um, well, one of the, 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 the issues that we have I, I, I identified around the, the, the submission of a, a non-quality financial statement has been around the gaps in terms of skills and capacity in the finance department or the finance uh, uh, function. So, so really we have urged uh, you know, the DG and the minister to fast track uh, the, the, the appointment of the CFO and also address uh, capacity challenges in the finance uh, unit, which might, uh, by filling in the by, by filling the positions that might have been vacant due to the postings to foreign missions, also of important is the capacitation of the CSMs um, with financial skills, financial uh, you know exposure that. You know the, the the CSMs that get posted to foreign missions because some of these issues, some of these findings emanate from foreign missions. So it is important that before any posting, a, you know, department must ensure that the the, the, the people that are going to be CSMs or the officials that are going to be CSMs are thoroughly empowered and capacitated, a, you know, around financial um, you know discipline. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just move then. I think uh, uh, what we have noted, though, with those, uh, you know, um, uh, gaps, we have also noted that, um, you know, we there has been a change of attitude and a, 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 and a renewed co commitment of the finance team led by the acting CCFO. And this was evident by the comprehensive and the sterling work that they did in addressing the prior year qualification um, matters around um, disallowance account. And they, they, there's always been a, you know, a, a, an issue, an audit finding on the um, around the Department of Home Affairs monies that were owned by DERCO to Home Affairs and, you know, and so forth. So, so we have um, uh, seen, you know, a commitment from the team in, in, in how they have addressed some of the issues and also the recommendations by the, the audit committee. However, there's still also um, other issues that still need to be uh, addressed. Um, uh, by um, the, the by the management, but I, I thought it was also Im important, uh, you know, to, um, to to stress that one of the issues. Um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, AG has um, uh, gone, um, you know, um, in in detail around the non-compliance with laws and regulations. Um, as far as unauthorized expenditure is, is concerned, um, yes, we, we do commend the, the department that in the, in, in the current financial year, which is 21-22, uh, they did not incur unauthorized expenditure compared to the 150 million uh, that was incurred in the previous financial year. However, um, of, of uh, concern is that uh, some of this um, the unauthorized expenditure, uh, you know, from the previous financial year has not yet been fully addressed and uh, condoned. Irregular expenditure, it is still the cancer uh, in, in the department, one of the cancer in the, 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 the department. And um, of concerning really is that um, it is, Increasing, it increase uh, as they, they, they also the the AG has also cited. We have seen an, an increase by by three hundred and eleven million vis a vis the one hundred and eighty seven million in the previous year. Though we 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 though the the cost of um, um, uh, co sorry co compensation of M M M M employees was one of the contributors to the irregular um, expenditure. But there are some um, contracts that were irregular in the previous financial year that are still running. Very much concerned uh, of the ICT irregular contract, among others, that is still running. Um, uh, you know, the SM process took a bit longer, uh, you know, to, 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 to appoint the new uh, contract so that the, this irregular contract could, uh, you know, could could um, be terminated or could come to an end. 
So, and there, there have been reasons and justifications um, that it cannot be terminated because it will affect the ICT or operations of the, 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 the department. Um, uh, that is very con concerning because, uh, you know, you from, from an independent position, one is then becomes a bit suspicious to say, are they being led, are they being made to run, uh, you know, so, and, and because it's still, they are still, uh, you know, um, um, uh, cause, causing irregular expenditure. So uh, we, 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 we do know that uh, even though the, the new contract might have been in, in place now, but it will still run for about six months or so, just for transitioning purposes. So that is our concern to say it, it is still, uh, you know, the, the, the irregular um, expenditure is increasing. Um, consequence management, say also a very serious concern, and we have sharply raised it with the DG and uh, the, the minister as well. Though we commend uh, the, the, the minister and uh, DG for, you know, for actions around consequence management, uh, you know, the way of officials that were held accountable, like the DG and the CFO, However, its uh, consequence management has not been implemented against all officials who incurred the previous irregular ex 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 expenditure. So, 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 so a, a lot still needs to be done there. And also, what we have um, 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 advised and also looked at, I mean, I recommended to, to the DG and uh, ministers that, you know, um, um, uh, irregular ex expenditure, they will need to, to look into it case by case because some of the cases there or some of, of the issues or on the irregular expenditure, they might not really warrant a fully fleshed investigation. You know, some, they are clear cut, uh, you know, you know, um, um, you know, issues of maybe it was just not following the SCM to the T, they might not have been criminal or elements of corruption and, and fraud, which those must be acted with speed, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, um, submit for, or, or rather apply for condonation. So, so that, you know, um, 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 the, the irregular expenditure could be reduced because it is really, um, uh, you know, in, in increasing. And those, and also it, it is important for, department as well or for, for management to, to unpack what consequence management is because in it, it's not always going to be firing people but you know um, um, because for the authority that condones they must be given evidence that consequence management had happened it might be in in a form of a counseling might be in a form of written warnings it might be in a form of you know whatever form it it will take so Department must look into fast tracking consequence management and hold those that have caused it uh, responsible. Um, fruitless and wasteful expenditure that was also touched. Um, it, we, we are sharing. We, we, are, we, we echo the same sentiment. As much as uh, you know, the department has managed to decrease the fruitless and wasteful expenditure in the current financial year of 4, 4 million vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, compared to the previous financial year, which was about 13 million. However, consequence management around fruitless and wasteful expenditure has not uh, been implemented. Now, you know, um, we, we are not seeing evidence of this fruitless and wasteful expenditure being re recovered because this is the expenditure that was uh, incurred in, 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 in vain. That, sh that should not that should have been avoided. So, so um, still, uh, consequence ma 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 management has, has not been implemented around fruitless and wasteful expenditure, though it is de decreasing, um, you know, co compared to the irregular expenditure. I, I have spoken to the rental deposit, uh, uh, where uh, you know this um, uh, it became one of the new issues that crops up, uh, you know, in this um, audit cycle where the department had failed to implement effective and appropriate steps to recover funds, re, or to recover refunds rather, from rental de deposit after the, the transferred official stem expire, to a point where uh, the department had to write off the 26.9 million. For me, uh, you know, um, uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, this is uh, this um, the department must look into and reflect this to the, the, the DG as well, because um, 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 if, this is not looked into, and if it's assessed by the AG, it might be a financial loss. Actually, um, AG has also just um, uh, con con confirmed earlier uh, around this. 
Um, IT, um, it is still a, a, a challenge and we flagged this to the DG and the, the minister. We have seen, uh, you know, so many, um, not so many, some of the findings that have been raised, they've come again, cropped up again, and really it is concerning because now the IT is an enabler, you know, um, you know, for, for the department to, you know, to operate, and the, the infrastructure modernization pro, uh, pro project, they, 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 there has been delays, uh, and and that has has been flipped. So the, the the ICT in infrastructure it is still obsolete. Uh, and yes, we 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 we, we do commend the, the, the department for the appointment of the CIO, but there are still vacancies, uh, you know, in the ITC space or uh, unit that needs to be filled to 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 fast track, uh, you know, the implementation of this um, project. Uh, yes, um, um, COVID nineteen might have uh, you know um, been one of the contributors, but I think. Um, you know, um, um, a, a lot that the department needs to, to do here to fast track, uh, you know, the, 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 the infrastructure modernization project. Um, uh, our concern and what we reflect uh, is that if these findings, they are not uh, addressed, uh, you know, they, they might open up the department, uh, you know, to risk of cyber attacks and business con con continuity. And some of the findings really, they, they could be addressed uh, you know, as a matter of agency, you know, um, issues like the security uh, policy, you know, the department can quickly work on that and, you know, and, imp and implement it. So, so um, we, we, we reflect this to the, the, the DG and the, 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 the minister, and we are encouraged that, uh, you know, uh, this is also close to, to their uh, heart, that they, they, they want to see ICT issues being uh, resolved. Um, one of the, lastly is on the property management. Um, so um, as the committee, we, we have also um, uh, embarked on a foreign mission oversight visit around March. Uh, we visited about three missions. We've come back and we've compiled a comprehensive report. We've taken pictures. It's all there and we've, uh, you know, um, submitted it to to, I mean, we, we have shared that report with the DG and subsequently with the minister around the state of properties, uh, you know, uh, around, uh, you know, the, 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 the missions, it's especially on the residences, the chancery, uh, you know, the lack of renovations, poor state of them, and you, where maintenance has not been, um, you know, um, uh, done there. And, and really this, uh, it poses a, a country re reputational risk. So um, um, uh, we have uh, compiled that. And what we have done as the, the committee as well, we are strongly monitoring uh, you know, um, uh, this, uh, because it has also become one of the, the standard agenda items on our quarterly AC meetings. We have requested uh, you know, from uh, the, the department a holistic property management strategy uh, and and where you know really they they will have to look into you know um, 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 if going forward you know some of the chancellors or the residences would they rather rent them or, or you know buy them out outright because really there's a lot of money that is being paid I mean we have also seen uh, you know um, a plus or, or, or minus how much uh, you know the department is spending on rentals on a monthly basis you know there's been a list of, uh, you know, the most expensive, um, uh, you know, um, uh, buildings that you are renting over, 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 overseas or so. So, so the, the department really um, needs to fast track, uh, you know, the, um, a, a, you know, the implementation of the property uh, management um, strategy. And, and on the quarterly basis, they do report on the, you know, the, the maintenance plan, you know, on their capital project as well, because what we've raised sharply is that even their budget, they don't uh, spend much on the uh, capital project. There's always savings, you know, around it. So so that should be an in, in, in area of focus going forward. Just on the ARF, um, on Honorable Minister, um, sorry about that. I'm not going to spend time here. Um, really, as I've said, the, 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 the fund 
excuse me, has obtained uh, clean audit outcomes, uh, you know, for, for five years in a row. But what has been, uh, you know, um, an issue, uh, actually there have been two findings uh, that has been raised by the, 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 the AG, uh, it has been on the performance information, you know, the year in, year out, the, the, the AG raises uh, material findings. Uh, on their performance in reformation, which they do adjust. But we, we, we want to get to a point where the fund can, uh, you know, can table and submit uh, performance information report that is free from material um, misstatement. So um, um, uh, our focus is on there and, and, and we will also be monitoring the, um, uh, the, the implementation of this a, you know, um, fine finding because even when they table their APP, it will also go through various role players where would play of oversight as well. And it was picked up that, uh, you know, the old audit committee have had not got sight of their APP before the tabling. So, 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 so this uh, uh, time around, they, you know, we will play oversight on their APP for the new financial year before it could even be tabled and will also seek input from the AG as, as part of the value add, just to make sure as well that the, the, the APP passes the, the smart principle. One of, of the findings that they've also been working on is the compliance with the triple BE Act re, re reporting uh, that came about, I think, in, a, in, in year 2016, where all the public entities and the departments must uh, report to, to, to the triple BE commission on the uh, uh, triple BE level. So, so um, uh, that was the, the finding that um, the, the ARF had had in the previous financial year. Just as a high level um, uh, on both of these, uh, I just also um, want to, to, to just um, uh, uh, cite on, uh, or rather um, mention that as well on the ARF, from the risk perspective uh, as well, um, we, we have also been looking at, uh, you know, the outstanding uh, uh, BRRR meta on the impact assessment, uh, you know, of the, the, the ARF um, that, uh, you know, the, the committee um, had, uh, you know, been re -re requesting. Uh, so, so, so there is, there, there is that um, uh, prior year B triple R recommendation that this has not yet been fully actioned uh, by the, the the fund around the, the impact um, um, as, as assessment and and what management has uh, you know um, um, uh, reported on is that the lack of funding they've approached the national treasury uh, for the funding to 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 conduct and carry that uh, you know um, um, study. However, we have strongly recommended to, you know, to the fund and also the CFO that, uh, you know, um, um, they must prioritize, you know, the, the, the budget with, within. Because unfortunately, you know, the request by the, to the National Treasury, it might be, uh, you know, responded positively or negatively. So, so should the National Treasury not grant them the funding. What's then? So, so it is something that uh, you know we are looking at. Obviously, some of the BRRR re recommendations by this uh, um, portfolio committee, uh, you know, uh, has been addressed also in the um, audit action plan around consequence management and uh, you know, and, and and so forth. So, so we have also just spoken to. Lastly, uh, Chair, Chairperson, really it is, I would like to appreciate, um, you know, the support, uh, you know, of this uh, portfolio committee for always affording us the opportunity to brief them and, and engage with us as the audit committee. Uh, also, I, I appreciate the support of the DG, the then acting DG, the acting CFO, um, the minister and um, head deputy ministers, and the rest of the department, um, you know, management team, uh, you know, for, 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 for the support towards the work of the committee. Uh, um, as I've said, uh, judging or listening, I mean, judging from the issues that we, we, we have uh, tab tabled here and by the AG as well, uh, uh, there's still uh, work to be done by the department and to turn around the department. I thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, Aousa Yanda. Thank you very much for the presentation on behalf of uh, 
the audit committee. Honorable members, on behalf of the portfolio committee, we take this opportunity to commend the department for the achievement in as far as the audit the outcome is concerned. So of being unqualified, of course, there are still some issues to attend to. We can now engage with the presentations. Honorable Faber, followed by Honorable Bergman. I'm looking for the names here. Honorable Faber, Honorable Bergman, Austin B, Honorable Swartz, Honorable Chetty, Honorable Nkosi, and Honorable Mpanza will be the last. Then we close the meeting. Honorable Faba. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, thank you first for the Auditor General and to Ayanda for the department for such a um, nice report that we could actually look at it. Thanks that we also got all these documentation up front to go through. Um, I'm going to quickly start with the first one. It is on the IT infrastructure, which is a concern to the AG. The infrastructure um, is apparently going to be supplied by SA provider. Now, we've got at least 85 foreign embassies and 101 consuls, consulates over the world. Now, we have discussed this in a previous meeting. And we were talking about the concerns why it has been done by one service provider in South Africa, so that we have to actually send this to all our embassies and consuls, um, specifically with service agreements in the IT um, sector, which will be uh, being havoc if you don't buy it in that specific place where you reside. Um, so this might be a concern and we need to know what the department is saying about this as it will have um, cost implications to us. Um, then I want to go to the Auditor's General Report on page 13, which is this um, financial assistance to Cuba. Now, Chairperson, the first point, the Auditor General said, that there is a misstatement findings, material misstatement findings. Now, I want to know what is this that the Auditor General um, report on the African Renaissance Fund mentioned uh, in his presentation as material misstatement findings? Because this is a serious finding, Chairperson. We cannot just think that material misstatement findings um, is just like a sugar-coated um, small thing to go by. Now, I'm now going to, there's a sentence there, that Cuba is the only non-African non country that's receiving funding from the ARF. And the reasons for this is based on the long-standing, respectable, cordial and political relationship between the countries. Now, I would just like to know if the auditor also don't find this as irregular. Then, um, in a contract dated 2003-2012, signed between the government and Cuba, a funding package of 350 million was agreed upon, of which 210 million is already dispersed. Now, if we look at it, Minister Pandor says that um, there was an extra in her forward. She says there was an extra 63 million dispensed to Cuba. Now. Um, this was for equipment. Now, I want to know if this 50 million aid was, um, be, this 63 million, if this was before or after the 50 million aid that was stopped by court for assistance to Cuba. Because as I understand, Afri Forum's got this case and the uh, um, High Court actually um, said that this has to be stopped. Now, I want to know, was this extra 63 million dispersed for equipment to Cuba after this outcome? Um, I just want to say, okay. Um, then also, the minister says in her report that the, um, and this is obviously through the department, that Cuba continues to repay the loan installment as per the agreements. Now, of this, 
which we understand 210 million has been already dispersed. How much is still outstanding from this 210 million to be paid back to South Africa? And was this looked at by the Auditor General on the payments um, from Cuba? Um, Chairperson, that will be all at this stage. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Faba. Honorable Berghi. Yeah, Chair, thank you very much. Chair, just with regards to the two statements, the one says that it's an unqualified audit report with material findings, sorry, with findings. And then, uh, as Honorable Faber read, there's uh, some material statements that uh, have serious findings. Now, I have come to respect the Auditor General's findings, and I, I do not question what the Auditor General finds or doesn't find. Um, I, I, however, given that in the last two Auditor General reports, they were uh, qualified audit reports, and that this is an a unqualified audit report with findings, the fact that we haven't had a proper CFO in the last financial term and given the issues with our last, with our CFO in the past, a lot of often when we rely on financial statements given to us as the Auditor General, you're saying your opinion is expressed on the validity of the information given to you. And for me, it's, it's problematic when we, you know, given that once this year we haven't really. Uh, had a CFO, and given that in the past we've questioned through disciplinary action, through suspension, the, uh, should I say, the correctness of the reports of the CFO in the, in the past. So I would like this committee, our committee, to actually call on the DG to ask for the Auditor General to actually uh, take the last five years and to actually give us a forensic audit report uh, to do a forensic audit uh, on the actual uh, for the last five years and I think that would actually probably make this committee or well, this committee would be more comfortable to give a forensic um, audit from the Auditor General. Thank you very much Chair. Thanks Honorable Berge. Honorable Msani. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, I have a few comments and a few questions of clarity. Um, we've just received a report that says that the old ICT company is still running and it will be running for the next six months. Well, this is very disappointing. And, you know, I'm, I'm not shocked to find out that this previous contract will still be running because it's this very committee that has been fighting for this ICT contract to be terminated. But in the irregular expenditure, um, where we are being informed that it's mostly contracts that are still running, which have expired and that are causing the 311 million. In the main quantum, um, apart from the ICT, which other contracts can maybe the audit team highlight as they've highlighted this ICT that would give this huge amount of irregular expenditure? Um, is it still the contract for the diplomatic bags? Um, which other contracts give us this uh, huge amount of irregular expenditure? And then, Chairperson, in, in the history we've, of this department, we've gotten to find out that most properties which are leased are bought for officials either get damaged um, by the time the contract or the rental lease is terminated or done, 
the property is not in the same condition that it was um, leased. Could it be that um, the, the deposit returns are not refunded back to the department because of the conditions that these properties are left after the, the lease agreement? And could it be that maybe also the termination of the property lease is not done correctly? That's why we have 26.9 million that is not returned in deposits. What is the exact reason um, that we have so much money that is not returned on, on leases? If I can just get an explanation of really what does it mean when National Treasury is um, giving a condemnation for the New York project? Um, I don't want to believe that the former DG and the former CFO being suspended and fired by the department was um, is something that this department can um, celebrate as consequence management as much as it's been uh, highlighted in today's report that Yes, there's a bit of consequence management because the former DG was suspended. Where we strongly believe that the former DG was a scapegoat of your former DG before him, which mainly was then um, sent to the UN to represent South Africa. In his name was um, uh, Jerry Malachi, who was then involved in these. Um, New York project. So what, what does it mean when Treasury um, is giving a condemnation? And um, what example are we setting moving forward? Because as a consequence management, it should have started from the minister who was oversighting this department when this New York project came into play, all the way to the last person that signed the contract at that time which now has found um, the country having to waste so much millions on something which does not exist. The department is said to have um, overspent on compensation of employees while having a vacancy of 16%. Does it mean that while the, the, the AG has found out that some of the non-employees of the department have not been terminated. Are they still getting paid by the department? That's why we are finding that the compensation of employees is always um, more than what it's budgeted for. Are we really paying people that are at work and for their uh, positions or we are overpaying people and also paying ghosts? in the process. Has that audit ever been done to find out that we are paying people for what they are qualified for and what um, and that they are uh, really employees? We've been raising the, 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 the issue, Chaperson, of training people before posting them abroad. And we are nearing our, term, our end of term now. And this issue is still sticking out like a sore thumb where you will find that there's mismanagement of funds due to people moving from making tea to being a head of a mission. We've raised this issue very sharply, and I don't believe that the department is doing anything about it, and I don't think the department will do anything about it in the near future. So such um, long-standing items which have not been remedied um, I don't know what the AG can do about them, but we really need a strong, uh, firm hand of the law on punishing those people that also take up a position knowing very well that you are not um, trained and capable to do it. Hence, you end up wasting money of, of, of South Africa. So, Chairperson, the property management, honestly, I think we need... The, the, the audit um, risk management team to eventually quantify in monetary value 
how much South Africa is wasting, because also this item is, I don't think it's being dealt with adequately. Since 2019, when we joined this committee, we've been raising the issue of, of property management. And I think it just goes through one ear and moves to another. We have properties which are being rented, nothing is happening, dilapidated property around the world. We are told that there are missions which are going to be shut down, but we, it, it's not translating to anything that can be noted by the AG or by the audit um, and risk team. So it, it, it might as well be considered as a talk shop of this department and it will be a talk shop until we exit in 2024 and it will be a talk shop for the rest of this department's life. So we need um, proper monetary value on, on the property management and how much is being wasted so that we can alert South Africans that your money is going into deliberated properties by this department. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Msani. Honorable Chetty. Yes, uh, so thank you, Chair. My, my apologies, I'm having a similar problem to you with my camera and reception. So I beg an indulgence that I don't put my camera on. Uh, person, again, due to connectivity, I've been in and out of the meeting. And if I do repeat some of the concerns already raised, uh, please forgive me. Chair, around the issue with Cuba, if the committee recalls clearly, we were informed in a sitting in the House, and when the minister tried to explain the issue around the 50 million donation, she herself acknowledged the fact that the ARF was meant to be funding for African countries, neighboring countries, for a reciprocal benefit. And we still, both the minister and the department cannot tell us, apart from a pre-1994 relationship that the ANC had with Cuba, what benefit South Africa as a country in a new democracy gets from this relationship and funding to Cuba. Chair, the acknowledgement of the 210 million as well. Is the AG in a position to tell us of the money already allocated to Cuba, how much in a repayment process have we received and over what period is the 210 million already given out expected to be repaid? Chair, coming back to the issue around the New York project, and I think it is a gross misunderstanding and representation if the Auditor General's Department believes that both the former DG and the former CFO were initially suspended and thereafter fired due to consequence management by this department. I want to make it very clear. It was the pressure placed by opposition parties that ensured the axing of the DG was made as a scapegoat to protect his predecessor, Jerry Machila, the CFO as well. This department for three years had failed to find him guilty until the newly elected committee put pressure and he is now subsequently dismissed. However, Chair, they do not speak about the recovery of these monies from those responsible. The fact that both the DG and the CFO has been fired for their involvement in this project. Surely criminal charges should be laid against them and that money recovered from them. Furthermore, Chairperson, 
consequence management, if the department wants to take credit for it, would have resulted in them having taken action against other senior officials involved in the procurement processes from our property management departments, which did not happen. Also, Chairperson, when we discussed the issue, and again, the deposits of 26.9 million, close to 27 million land, this committee previously raised the issue that those foreign uh, deployees, that if there are any monies or deposits that are not refunded to Durgo due to the fact that there's been gross negligence and damages to those properties by Durgo due to the fact that uh, as in our foreign employees that caused us to lose those deposits that those monies should be recovered from those officials. I see the report is very silent on that. I would have hoped that that would have been a recommendation as well from the AG as to those 27 million rand in the current situation that the normal South African find themselves with the increasing cost of living. There's a lot of money just to throw away. Chairperson, I heard it being raised about the fact that the committee has tried in vain to terminate the services of the ITC company. And Chair, you cannot fault the committee for assuming that the further lease of another six months entailing further irregular expenditure on this company is an attempt to cover up the shenanigans by the previous CFO and his dealings. What comes to mind immediately, Chairperson, is the cover up for those employees, former employees who have been dismissed or resigned, still on the system. And it's put very politely when it says still on the system, but without confirming or denying any acknowledgement that they are being paid. That is another investigation that I hope is going to take place. Chairperson, I just want to find out from the audit committee, they acknowledge that we are renting some of the most expensive office space abroad and that they have done a report that they have submitted to the minister and to the DG uh, that report hasn't been seen before us as a committee but can the representative tell us if the current engaged sublease for the New York Mission as one of those expensive offices that could have resulted in us engaging for cheaper rental. Chairperson, as I conclude, we now hear that there is the supplier who wants to challenge us in court for the New York pilot project. What astounds me is that we, as an organization, have found people within the department to be guilty, and yet we fail to take action. And those people who colluded with these officials for the said project now seems to feel they have the audacity and the grounds to challenge us in court for that. Again, Chairperson, it clearly shows that 
even though the former DG has been exiled, there is still some sense of control he has over this department in terms of divisions. So, Reginald Settler to be bold enough to want to challenge us, even after we have exposed the fact that after squandering 180 million men, South Africa has absolutely nothing. No land, no office space, not even title need to show for the 180 million men that we have squandered. Yet those, as yet that organization feels they can challenge us with court action. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Honorable Chetty. Uh, Honorable uh, the Queen. Honorable Swartz. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair, and good morning to Honorable Members and to everyone. Chair, I am just going to show my face that I'm the one speaking, and then I will switch off my camera as I've got network issues, but I'm sure everybody can see that it's uh, myself speaking. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thanks for that. You can proceed. Honorable, Honorable Chair, I just want to first raise that um, I'm very shocked and surprised that uh, we are still sitting here today and talking about ICT which in not so long ago, our last meeting, uh, the department was actually ready to shoot off our heads when we were talking about ICT and talking about the green project and where officials boldly responded to us that uh, there is no such a contract existing anymore. They furthermore went to even comment and say that handovers were done and they were trying to educate us as if we do not know that when a new company comes in, there are handovers that, are, uh, that get done. Then we are sitting here today just to hear that a green project has still been extended for six months. Um, on the properties, Honorable Chair, I really think that um, the department should really tell us in which language they want us to really uh, talk to them about the property issues because honestly, Chair, if you go to the APP, there's always something around properties. And uh, forevermore, we are asking for one thing from the department around properties now. Uh, as things stand, uh, Honorable Chair, it means that... Um, uh, this sixth parliament term will end and uh, we will not have achieved anything around the properties because surely and purely they put it in their APPs, then they do something else. In each and every committee meeting, we are talking about this. So it does not give any comfort that we'll arrive uh, anywhere soon on this. But um, I think that... Uh, I will then go on to what I want to really ask uh, Honorable Chase that the department has reported that they have canceled all the irregular contracts. Now we hear those contracts have caused an increase in irregular expenditure. Which contracts are these? Are they in shipping or storage? We have always hammered the need to build relevant skills in finance and SCM. The issue of corporate services managers who are expected to deal with finances in the missions, who have no clue on finances, has been on the cards for too long. We know that point and we will raise it with the department sharply tomorrow. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Swartz. Honorable Becky Nkosi. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, I, I also want to join other members in congratulating the department on moving away from <clears throat> qualified. I, however, Chair, uh, still have uh, certain problems in relation to uh, aspects of the department's uh, reports. Firstly, 
Third is the issue of <clears throat> compliance with legislation and uh, the laws, uh, in particular in SCM, but now raised sharply as far as the presentation of financial, annual financial statements, expenditure management, etc. I would like the AG to clarify us um, on, on what exactly do they think is, is the problem. Uh, in the past, we have isolated and discussed SCM uh, ad nauseum, uh, and we've encouraged consequence management, but it's clear that this is something that uh, the department is unable to get out of or really to address satisfactorily and in such a way that it doesn't recur. Uh, as you note, it has recurred over the financial years that we've been responsible for. Um, secondly, Chair, is the, the area on, on the, the, the focus area on international relations as a, as a program. I think the notable uh, uh, progress is, is, is appreciated. I, however, still have problems, not really problems. I, I however, still want to know the extent of the interaction between DECO and DTIC in as far as ensuring that uh, economic diplomacy is conducted in a manner that is beneficial to the country. Uh, previously, we have noted that there is less and less coordination between the two uh, with DTIC reportedly closing uh, their trade missions in some uh, uh, jurisdictions. So I just want to check if uh, the AG is aware uh, of such. <clears throat> the, the other problem really in, in that regard is, is the vacancy rate, uh, both of funded and unfunded uh, vacancies, you know, particularly it's at senior managerial level as outlined there that you have what, 237 supervisory positions uh, and senior management uh, positions that are vacant. What is the impact? And did the AG investigate how this arises? Remember that we know that the department is largely used as a waiting room for deployments to, to foreign missions. And usually those people that are deployed are taken from this level, the supervisory positions and senior management. And that is why you will then have a problem because people simply come back from missions to wait a year or two, and then they're, they're deployed elsewhere. That creates a gap. That means in terms of monitoring their subordinates for information on performance, on financial performance, et cetera, will suffer because there is a change every six, I mean, let's say every 12 months uh, or 18 months uh, and what the impact of that is or will be. I, I, I also am concerned uh, as, as the audit risk and the, the AG about the, the quality of financial management and, and I mean reports and submissions that if these have to be supported submitted and have to be sent back for correction. It means in the internal controls of the department and the reporting, uh, there is no quality assurance to ensure that the information that is uh, reported on a quarterly basis is intact or, or rather uh, is, is of such quality that it will lead to a, a, a credible report to the AG. So this is something that we need to raise uh, uh, with the DG and the department when they arrive. As far as uh, capacity in the financial department, finance department, I think we've, we've raised this issue also at museum. And it's clear that uh, in the previous financial years, certain staff in that division were also deployed. You know, that, that will have an impact on the nature and content of, content of your work. If in the middle of a financial year, you deploy five to six people outside of the country, it means those that you bring are going to be brought on an ad hoc basis 
without prior training, that puts stress on the senior managers who have to do a double job really of uh, implementing and monitoring and ensuring quality of financial statements. So the department should be able to, to respond to that on, on, on that. Uh, that also, also goes to expenditure management. I, I just want to also raise in that regard to the issue of rentals. Uh, I hear the internal auditors say they conducted, I mean, not rentals, property management, that they, they conducted a, a, a study I would request that they share that with us uh, directly, not within, without even going to the department. Uh, because if there are similarities between what we found and what they have found, then this matter is something that should be escalated and, and be attentioned at all times because of the financial losses that we're suffering. Um, related to that, Chair, is the issue of, of uh, rental deposits. I agree that we, we cannot be paid, paying deposits and not reclaim them after the leases expire. But I also think that to put the blame on the recipients or the people who are contracted on whose behalf the department contracts uh, is also not, not adequate. We should put the blame also or, or seek reports also from those people in DECO who are responsible for rentals and acquisitions abroad, because those people don't sit abroad. They sit here at OR Tambo House, uh, and they enter into those uh, contracts on behalf of the country. And therefore, it is their responsibility in terms of contract management to ensure that when they know that there are vacancies, I mean, there are premises that will, will whose leases will expire, they should insist on the return of the deposits even before uh, or guarantees of the return of the deposits even before before people vacate uh, the, the the said properties. So this is an area that I I think we we have not neglected, but we have highlighted in the past. I I will not comment on the issue of IT. I think we've 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 uh, exhausted this issue uh, for quite a long time. My only concern Jay, is that uh, it doesn't look like the department is responding in a manner that answers what we, we raise. Uh, my concern is on the impact of delivery of their uh, services in the missions if they continue to rely on obsolete uh, IT infrastructure and, and, and software. Then there's the issue of consequent management, Chairperson. I think the AG notes that this is not escalated downwards. Um, it cannot be that it's only the minister uh, who is expected to ensure consequence management. The extent to which they can do it is, is, is really limited to uh, senior managers in the department. DDGs must be held responsible uh, for consequent management. And in this regard, you, you have a backlog that stretches to 2017-18. At this trajectory, it means when you close the financial year, I mean, when you close the term for 2023-24, you will, you will still have outstanding issues that uh, have not been reported to. The other thing is the, the matter that we've always raised uh, around ARF and, and, and DECO. I think I see that the DG, both the DG and the internal audit have combined the reports. We've previously requested that when, even when ARF does well, it should be reported separately if, to us so that we are, we are able to engage ARF as ARF, not as a comparison to DECO, because currently the way the presentation is made by the AG makes us to compare or or to use ARF as a standard for the, for the department when in fact ARF should be examined as an entity on its own. We must check why they are successful, where they are and where the failures are and, look, and be able to locate them and address them adequately. So I'll just ask for that separation in future, uh, even in interim reports. Um, the point around impact of, of their, their work is noted but we also 
uh, beyond noting, I think we, we, it's unacceptable, Chair, that uh, they will have to go to find to get funding to check impact. I, I think they have it within their means. They must just go and use their contracts to check deliverables in terms of the contracts and the economic benefits. They can do it. Uh, they don't have to rely on Treasury to give them money to then travel and check whether the boreholes that they've, they've uh, uh, done or erected in Namibia are working. No. And Chair, the final, I, I, on the issue of, of uh, the Cuban contract, um, I think I agree with everybody that uh, the AG has noted that the, the, in terms of the agreement entered into between ourselves and Cuba, uh, it, the contract was intact, it was done according to prescripts, approved, etc. I I just really, in closing, just want to forgive the Cubans for doing what they did in Quito Conovale. That thing will never disappear in the minds of other people. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Mbanza, thanks, Honorable Ngozi. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, may I also ask for your ind indulgence not to put my camera on because of connectivity challenges? Agreed. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, first of all, Chairperson, let me also welcome both uh, the presentations uh, from AG and also the uh, Audit and Risk Committee. And also, Chair, welcome also even the recommendations uh, that uh, <clears throat> they have uh, put forward, and in particular, those who, that they are directed uh, to the Portfolio Committee. Uh, we note them, and uh, we will make sure that they are followed through. Let me also, Chair, start with where uh, Honorable Nkosi has uh, ended. Uh, just to thank uh, the AG also for clarifying the issue of uh, Cuba, uh, that it was done uh, in line uh, with the ARF, ARF Act, and uh, also even the payments were done uh, by the Minister of the ECO in concurrence with the Minister of Finance. Uh, because this issue has been uh, politicized quite a lot uh, for a number of uh, all sorts of reasons. But uh, what I want to check, <clears throat> because uh, we must clarify this uh, impression or perception, that uh, what is before the court, it's like the whole uh, payment that has been made to Cuba I would want uh, to AG to clarify what is the quantum that is before the court. Is the total uh, <clears throat> payments that have been made to Cuba or it's a, a particular amount uh, that is before the court? Uh, Chair, I'm also as surprised as other honorable members uh, when it comes to this ICT uh, contract. Uh, I think really, I don't know whether it was a deliberate misleading or by the DECO officials, or maybe it was an oversight on their side uh, that the, the old contract was uh, uh, terminated, which was uh, whose extension, extension was irregular. But uh, I'm, I'm just, just want to check, you, you know, this transition, because we were told the transition uh, I don't, I can't remember how many months has taken place so that uh, there will be a smooth transition from the old contract to the new one. Now, I don't know how many transitions now uh, that are being, uh, because now we're told about another six months. Uh, my fear is that even uh, next year we'll be told about another transition of six months when this one is, has lapsed, because my impression was that that uh, transition period has also lapsed. Therefore, the contract is terminated. Uh, so I think uh, we need to, to get uh, clarity uh, on that one. The, the third point here, uh, I was um, happy to hear the chair of uh, the Audit and Risk Committee 
saying that uh, they have done uh, three uh, oversights, or maybe they have visited uh, three uh, missions. So I didn't get that one correctly in terms of on terms of the number. But to me, the issue is, I'm happy that they have had that opportunity to do that to do the oversight. But uh, my, 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 my issue, Chair, is that we as a portfolio committee uh, whose main uh, mandate as per the law is to do oversight uh, over the department and uh, the executive. But uh, Chair, you know, it becomes a, a Mount Everest, the tallest uh, mountain uh, in the world when we seek approval from the powers that be uh, to do over our, or, or, or our oversight role, particularly uh, on the missions. Uh, because it's important that we do that oversight as the audit uh, committee has done and then they came back with the reports which uh, show uh, the state of those missions. We have done a, 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 a visual oversight during COVID, I think about 11 of them. We also uh, were surprised to see the conditions uh, of uh, those offices and even the conditions of uh, the, the staff that is manning uh, those uh, missions. Uh, in different parts of the world. So, Chair, I will uh, really appeal to you uh, at your level, really to engage with the powers that be, that uh, let us be allowed to do this thing. Uh, it's important uh, because if you hear, uh, particularly from the Audit and Risk uh, uh, Committee, that uh, and even the AG, um, some of this uh, non-compliance with regulations and laws, uh, some of them are, are, are coming, uh, quite a number of them are coming from the missions. Now, it's important that if we want to assist through our oversighting role uh, in uh, assisting the department and the the, 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 the AG to, for it to be able to deal with this uh, elephant in the room of uh, uh, non-compliant with the regulations and law. Uh, we also do our, be allowed to do our oversight uh, so that it will be a team effort, not uh, that uh, we work in silos. Uh, the AG is working on its side, the department's working on its side, the executive, and we as a committee. At the end of the day, we're one government, and we've got one mandate uh, to uh, ensure that uh, we bring services and make uh, the people of South Africa lives better. Uh, Chair, then the other one is the issue of uh, the foreign services. Since the Se Foreign Services Act is in place now, and regulations have been put in place, I think the Act now must be implemented without fail. And in particular, when it relates to project management, as other Honorable uh, members have been talking about, particularly I know uh, Honorable uh, Swart is very passionate about this, uh, that the process of transferring the properties that belong to DECO uh, must, must now be implemented. Uh, so that we'll be able to hold the department accountable uh, without it then saying, no, the reason why there's this problem in this mission on this property is because uh, the property is still uh, supervised or still uh, managed by, by the public works and the infrastructure. So I, I think, Chair, I will propose that we will want to get... Uh, uh, regular reports uh, as to how this process is unfolding uh, of transferring 
these properties back to, to DECO. The one before the last chair, uh, is that, I don't know, maybe this is the department that will answer, but if the AG and the audits can uh, answer, when are we going to have the migration of ARF? It's the, this, this thing, I don't know how many times. It looks as if I will even finish our, our term uh, without this uh, a process not being finalized because every time we told that it's going to take place, uh, we're going to move to SAPTA and uh, then there's a discussion with treasurer and all those things. So can, can, can the, these two entities also uh, assist in ensuring that uh, this uh, process uh, is uh, implemented because it also have some serious audit uh, implications because you have a situation where the DG uh, is, a, is, a, is a referee and a player. And, and a, you know, someone cannot account uh, to himself or, her, or to herself. Then they, that, that becomes a problem. And some of those, the issues that we are, we are talking about maybe might be as a result of that uh, anomaly that is not uh, uh, addressed. Lastly, Chair, uh, on the issue of uh, high rate of vacancies. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a problem, but I just want to check what is the department, uh, I don't know, the department is not here, uh, but maybe when we meet, maybe tomorrow we'll raise this issue, but I'm just raising it. Uh, if uh, there's anyone who can uh, be able to talk about it. What is the department's uh, program when it comes to uh, internships and learnerships. The reason why Chair, I'm raising this issue, we are sitting here in this country with a high rate of unemployed uh, graduates uh, who are sitting idling after they finish uh, their uh, schooling and uh, there's, there's, there's nothing they can do. So I want to, to know whether the department, or if they've not looked at that, can they then use uh, some of those uh, uh, interventions uh, in actually trying to deal with the issue of uh, the, the, the high uh, rate of vacancies there, rather than always looking for full-time employment? What, what are we saying about this, uh, you know, um, pool of talent and skills of young people, you know, what is our contribution as a department uh, in trying to absorb those and, and to, 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 to then assist uh, the department when it comes to issues of human resources, but also as a contribution to us addressing uh, the issues of uh, the triple challenges of unemployment, uh, poverty, and inequality. So I would like to leave that chair <clears throat> as a food for thought for all of us, if no one can be in a position to answer it at this point in time. Thanks very much, uh, Chairperson, for the opportunity. Thanks, Honorable Mbanza, and all the members who raised issues based on these two reports. I'm just, from my side, raising one issue. From the AG's perspective and ourselves, I think we should consider suggesting that the matters that arise from auditing must become key performance targets for the top management of the department, not only the CFO, because I think the entire top management of the department is responsible to make sure that all the matters that have been raised in relation to auditing outcomes are addressed. Over to you. I don't know who's going to start from the AG's office, then they'll be followed by a risk. Thank you, Chairperson, and, and, and thank you for all of the questions. Um, 
I will I will start with with some of the responses, and uh, Potehi will then come in for the remaining. It's, uh, I, I see a lot of the members did raise the issue around Cuba. So I think maybe it's uh, important for us to reflect how we covered this through our audit process. So in terms of uh, the amounts that have been uh, transferred through to Cuba in terms of the assistance, we've looked at it from a compliance perspective in line with the conditions of the uh, ARF Act, as well as looking at that approval process that's uh, prescribed as per the Act, which does require the Minister of Durko, as well as a concurrence from the Minister of Finance. So as part of those uh, assessments that was done, uh, we did not find any issues. So, so I thought that was important to clarify how we looked at the uh, monies that have gone through to Cuba. Uh, in terms of, I think it was member Faber who asked specifically around the 63 million. I will request then that Protehi covers that part of the reflections as part of his responses. Uh, there was a question by member, I think it's Amsane, my apologies if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, around the lease properties and whether the non-refunding uh, of the deposit could be due to the condition at the end of the lease term. Yes, that is one of the issues that does result in landlords either withholding the entire refund or uh, withholding parts of the refund so that a full amount is not refunded at the uh, end of the term of that uh, lease. And that is where we then highlight as a concern the consequence management processes that should take place in respect of the transferred officials that should be maintaining uh, those lease properties that has been vested in there. Uh, to a, a suitable uh, condition to ensure that at the end of the lease term, there aren't any issues in terms of the condition once those handover processes uh, does take place. It's also important to highlight as part of that uh, end of lease term process, there is inspection processes that's built in as part of the process so that the properties are inspected and there's confirmation in terms of the issues that's identified as part of that inspection process. A similar process is undertaken at the commencement of the lease term so that you sign for exactly the condition that you're getting the property in. So definitely there should be consequence management in respect of officials that have not maintained the property uh, to the extent that it should be. And that is why we then highlight the consequence management as well as where refunds should have been are uh, received back at the missions. That's when the CSMs play a key role in terms of following up with the respective landlords and getting the funds back. So, so consequence management and ensuring that everyone is accountable for, for maintaining the condition. And here I speak specifically to the transferred officials. That's very important as part of the process there. Uh, the other question was around, I think it was member Faber who had a question on slide 13, and I think uh, there was mention of a misstatement. Now, the misstatement that we identified wasn't relating to the Cuba issue. It was a misstatement that we identified on the annual performance report in terms of the accuracy of the reporting included on that annual performance report, that was then adjusted for, and there were no other issues identified, which then uh, gave rise to the clean audit of the ARF. So I hope that clarifies that part. Uh, in terms of, I'm just going through my list here.
I think I think the department would be best placed in terms of responding as to the reasons why uh, perhaps that ICT contract has been extended uh, for another six months. But in terms of our follow-ups, part of the discussions that we had indicated that it was through to, due to almost a handover process that needs to happen between now the new service provider as they take over from the the previous one but i'm sure that the the audit committee members on the call can also provide reflections on that uh Poteki can deal with in terms of the irregular contracts beside now that it related one which are the other significant contracts, if any, that have been included here. But I think the important one is to also reflect on uh, a lot of the uh, irregular also comes from the missions as iterated by the members. And it's important to understand that that a lot of that relates to where missions do not follow a three quote process uh, in terms of the policies of DERCO and in terms of when they do not follow a three-quote uh, three process, they don't go through a, a deviation approval process, which then triggers irregular expenditure in respect of what has been procured. Uh, Puteki, if you can then take the remaining ones. Thank you, uh, uh, Kumari. Um... Good day once again, honorable uh, chair and uh, members. Um, the first question uh, from honorable member Faber uh, was around why is the contract done by South African company? Uh, on this one, uh, what we look at from an audit uh, perspective, we look at the, the process of awarding the contract to the supplier. So I think around uh, why the, the tender is awarded to a startup company, I think the, the department can be best suited to, to respond to that. But on our side, what we look at, we look at whether uh, all the SEM uh, policies were complied with in awarding the, the actual tender itself. I've seen in one of the presentation that uh, the department made for like uh, in the meeting uh, between the department and the portfolio committee, uh, where the department mentioned that one of the reasons they opted for a South African company is because they wanted all the equipment to be uh, centralized and uh, also to to make sure that they are um, set up. To, 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 to work according to the department systems before they ship to different missions. But um, without risking uh, to respond on behalf of the department, I think they can best deal with that. And then um, Honorable Member Faber also asked about the 63 million. So the 63 million um, is on a co old contract. Uh, it, it is uh, co totally different from the 50 million, which is something that was new, uh, different from the old uh, Cuba agreement. So in terms of the 50 million, I think also honorable member um, Banza also asked uh, a question. Um, so for me, for us to clarify what is actually before the courts, just combining those two questions. So what is before the courts, it's the 50 million uh, that Derko wanted to, to disperse for assistance to Cuba. So that has, it's still on hold. Uh, and um, it does, it's not part of the old contract that was signed uh, between the, the country and the, the, the Cuban uh, country. Uh, and also, Honorable Member Faber asked the question whether the repayments uh, are still on track. Yes, as part of the audit process, we do uh, uh, one of the process that we do uh, as required by the accounting standards as well is that we need to test if there's a, any credit facility, we need to test it for what we call impairment testing. So if there are indications that um, uh, uh, the data in this case in Cuba, uh, instances where they missed repayments or they asked for extensions, then that gives an indication that they might struggle to repay the, the facilities. So I can report that uh, based on the process that we performed uh, using the accounting standards, so far they have uh, been able to repay uh, based on the contract that they signed uh, with the fund. So there are no 
outstanding repayments um, as per the contract. So they've managed to repay all the, the based or according to the, the agreement. And um, Honorable Member Bergman uh, also asked about the, the, the forensic audit. Uh, on this one, um, uh, usually uh, other audit, uh, other work uh, outside the, the normal audit work. So this usually come, has to come in the form of a request uh, from the department asking us uh, to do additional work. And then it goes through uh, other units to, 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 to assess and whether uh, to see if we can actually accept that. But um, uh, if there is a request, we will definitely uh, consider uh, whether we'll be uh, doing that forensic or not. And Honorable Sani um, also asked uh, about other contracts beside the ICT. I think one of the, 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 the contract that uh, I think we identified is regular uh, in the prior year. Uh, it has to deal with uh, storage and shipping. So those are some of the, the additional contracts that will con to continue to contribute to a regular expenditure uh, into the future, as all the payments that will be made on those contracts uh, will have to be disclosed as irregular expenditure. And on the issue of properties, I think uh, my colleague uh, Kumari has already responded to that uh, relating to this. Um, and one of the questions also from Honorable Msani um, is whether, uh, what does it mean when National Treasury condones uh, irregular expenditure? So what this means is that uh, condonation means that the, 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 the event of uh, non-compliance uh, gets, regular, gets regularized. So any contract that has been condoned by National Treasury, any future payments on that contract is no longer disclosed as a regular expenditure as the non-compliance has been uh, regularized. And also, and I think some of the comments from Honorable Msani uh, will be best, uh, it will be best if the, the, the department actually respond to them, especially some of the comments around uh, Honorable, uh, I mean, uh, the former DG, Majila, and, and whether they were covering up or not. I think the department will be best to respond to this one. And then, um, so one question was uh, from Honorable Sunny as well, whether the department is still paying employees that are terminated. Uh, based on the audit work that we've done, uh, we have not identified any instances where employees that are no longer in the services of the department uh, are still being, played, still being paid. So as part of the audit process, uh, we do some tests to see if we can identify uh, ghost employees. Um, we also used uh, our support uh, B, uh, business units uh, in the form of IT to run some uh, CATs, uh, computer assisted techniques, just to see if we can identify any ghost employees. And from that exercise, we have not identified uh, uh, any ghost employees. Um, the issue of posting, uh, I think Honorable Sunny also believes that, that this will be dealt with. I think on our side, um, what we, 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 we do give a recommendation that uh, the department definitely needs to relook at uh, their posting uh, policy to ensure that the CSMs, uh, corporate service managers, uh, have a minimum finance uh, background uh, to ensure that at least then uh, while they are running the missions, especially if they are charged with running the finances within the department, within the missions, then they do so from a, a, a finance background point of view. And also, um, Honorable Member Chetty, um, I think you made, if they, you made the comment about where you can't see the, the benefits between Cuba and South Africa. I think on this one, I think uh, the department will also be best uh, to respond to this one as it's directly uh, um, related to the, the department's policies. And also, um, Yes, I think uh, my colleague also from one of the questions from Honorable uh, Member Chetty regarding the rentals, I think uh, my, my colleague Kumari has already dealt with this, with that one. And also there was a comment from Honorable Chetty about the, the, the expensive properties, uh, I think also made an example of New York. So I think from our side, what we do um, the department has what we call a foreign service code uh, that they comply with. And also, 
Uh, regularly, what they do, uh, they will do what they call um, rental norm assessments. So they go all over uh, in, in the in the in the missions where they operate, and then they try to do a market uh, analysis to see what is the rental norm in those specific countries. And based on that assessment, then a document is compiled at head office to say, at mission A, these are the rental norms based on the assessment. So we do consider those when we're doing the, the normal audit process. And then over and above that, the department has to comply with the PFMA and also uh, some of the ACM policies uh, that they need to make sure that uh, when they do procure some of these services, they actually comply with the ACM processes to ensure that uh, whatever uh, property they end up with, it's something that is economical and most beneficial for the department. So the New York uh, mission is one of the missions that uh, is due to be visited. So in the 2022-23 uh, audit cycle uh, is one of the missions that we'll be visiting uh, as part of the selection for audit purposes. And then some of the questions from uh, Honorable Member Sart, um, I think it's more. it was more comments. I think this one's also is just comments around the APP and there's always about something about uh, properties. And Honorable Member Ngozi, uh, some of the questions uh, from Member Ngozi, uh, I think the question was, what do we think is the problem? Uh, I think this was relating to the regular expenditure that the department keeps on uh, incurring, and this is a recurring issue. Uh, so I think uh, as part of the, the, the also the, the presentation, we do indicate that linking the, the non-compliance that uh, keep recurring within the department to the consequence management. So we believe from an audit point of view that if uh, the investigations can be done, as we have seen that there's been uh, some progress so far uh, based on the assistance that the department is actually receiving from National Treasury. Based on that exercise, uh, on the outcomes of those exercises, where the true root causes will be determined, then the department will be able to actually get to the true root causes. And one of the recommendations as well, I think linking to the non-compliance we pick up admissions, uh, around specifically around the recordation. So that exercise where the deputy De director generals will sit with the heads of missions as well as the CSMs to work out exactly why do they not obtain the recordations or even where they're supposed to obtain. That will actually assist, assist the department to, to be able to come up with proper root cause analysis and implement uh, preventative controls going forward. Uh, what is the impact of the kid position come from the post? Okay, I think the one question also from member Ngosi uh, is about the impact of vacant positions. Uh, I think this was around uh, the posting uh, from different uh, from different units and, and other people returning from from the from the missions. What we picked up, of course, is that I think in flight nine on flight nine we also indicated that. Uh, some of the um, uh, officials uh, within finance specifically were posted abroad. I think that also added an additional pressure on the remaining staff. So we do engage with the uh, with management on this issue of transferring officials abroad and back. That when they allocate them to different units, they need to look at the skill sets that each individual has, so that when they get uh, allocated to different units, then they can be able to contribute positively. Um, the, the issue of uh, Honorable Ngozi also asked that maybe next time we must maybe just try to separate the ARF as well as the international DERCO when we report. I think that is something that we can consider, uh, 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 Honorable Chair. And um, the, 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 the Honorable Banza as well, I think, asked a question around uh, the ARF and SATPA. Uh, on this one, Honorable Chair, uh, if you give permission, I would like it to pass it to the department if they can give progress on this one, uh, as they will be best suited to respond to it. And also the internships. I've seen one presentation as well where the department was uh, responding to a question, uh, I think, uh, around internships that they've thinking of coming up with internships, especially under the property management unit, but also the, the department can best respond to this one. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, I believe uh, we have responded to all the questions and uh, back to you, uh, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ndadu Matadi. Audit Committee? Anything? 
I'll say, yeah. Yes, thank you. So, yes, thank you so much, Chair. Uh, we, without really any further ado, I think um, most of the questions have been covered by the AG, uh, and and uh, you know on the question that we asked, probably just from the audit um, committee perspective, there was just one question that was um, um, asked directly to us. Actually, two questions. One was on the um, uh, property rentals. Um, uh, one we, we are proposing an uh, uh, honorable chair is that, uh, you know, we, the, 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 the committee would be finished with the list of all probably the, the top 10, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, most expensive um, property rentals. But we, we can confirm that uh, the, the New York Chancery is also on the list. If it's not uh, taking the, the, the sports number one, I think the the the, the property that they the, the are renting or separating from the British government. So um, it is there on the list uh, of the you know the I won't say top eight, but the you know the, the, the property rentals that are high top ten. So we can also finish the the, the top ten list of also the most expensive um, residents uh, you know uh, property rentals pay pay the mission. Then there was a, a question on the property, uh, sorry, not properties, but on the contract irregular um, uh, expenditure, uh, which AG has also um, attached on. Um, uh, probably we will, we will, we will also um, um, re recommend the same approach that on the content reasons that, uh, you know, the, the department has probably in their wisdom uh, is, uh, as to why uh, they, they've, um, you know, gone the transitional uh, uh, arrangement with the PT communication, probably that will be coming from the, the department. But we can confirm that in the irregular expenditure register for quarter one in the current financial year, there was still irregular ex expenditure from that ICT contract by PT com communication. And also AG has... Um, confirmed and touched on uh, that the, the other contributor into the irregular e e expenditure is the uh, you know the, the, the contract on the uh, moving and storage uh, you know contract and then project chair on the the, 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 the the bulk also of the the, the, the contributor to to the uh, irregular expenditure I think it is also important to to, to, to note and confirm that it's coming from uh, you know the the the, the exceeding of the sale ceiling uh, on COE approved by the National Treasury for the the, 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 the department, which resulted in the ir irregular expenditure. So we are we are talking about close to one hundred one hundred million, if it's not one hundred nine million, you know. So 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 that which makes up the the, the three hundred and eleven million of uh, irregular expenditure that was incurred in the 2021 financial year. Obviously, then the others come from the munitions as AG has uh, alluded or two. Chair, um, uh, in, in terms of the misleading by the department, I, I think we, 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 we don't have uh, you know the, the comment on that in terms of the you know the, the um, a green con co contract, but we, we have confirmed that what is still sitting even in quarter one of the 2023 comes from the the you know one of those uh, green contract, which is uh, the the ICT contract. I just want to quickly then just a uh, 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 you know correct. Um, uh, you know, the statement by the, the member that the audit committee uh, did the study. Actually, we did, we did not do the, 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 the study per se, but we, 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 we embarked on the um, 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 foreign mission oversight uh, a visit where we looked at, uh, actually it was in March, so we, we were, among other things, to look at the uh, you know the, the, the work that is done by the CSMs to, to, to assess and check how the mission is ready for the the, 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 the audit and issues around the, the financial management budget and and so forth. What really caught our our attention, which we're not prepared for that much, actually, you know, it was on property management, the state of those pro uh, properties. So, so uh, we, I mean, through the permission of the department, we we can make that a uh, report. A, um, um, available to the portfolio committee. We did on three missions. One of those was uh, in London. We did, uh, you know, the my, my Madrid um, as well as the mission in the Hague. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, my sister. Also, Ayanda. The recommendations as they have been made, uh, honorable members, have been captured, so I will not repeat them. We want to thank the honorable members for the constructive manner in which they engage with both reports. 
We also want to thank both the internal audit committee and the Auditor General's Auditor General's Office for investing time, resources in making sure that we stay within the line from an oversight point of view in as far as using the taxpayers' money's consent. We want to thank the staff for preparing for the success of, of this meeting. We also want to thank South Africans who have participated by observing, by learning, by making notes on the proceedings of this portfolio committee as it regards to financial management and its performance by the department and ARF. This is how we come to the end of the meeting, honorable members, and the meeting is now closed. Bye-bye. Thank you, Shabazan. Thank you, Chairperson. Bye. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, sir.